Hey guys, what's up? It's Eli Knight with Knight Jiu Jitsu, of course, and I'm making a video today about the fundamentals of rubber guard. This is something I get asked about a lot of times. People ask me about rubber guard, and I've never really made um, a video about it. So anyway, I thought that I would kind of take you through some of the fundamentals of it, how it works, and some important considerations that people often overlook whenever they're playing rubber guard. Rubber guard happens from whenever the guy's posture is broken down inside your guard. It's a really good way of controlling the guy, so if I've got him broken down somehow like this, and I have just kind of a standard closed guard. If he has, if Alan still has his hands inside like this whenever I first break down this way here, um, I want to make sure that I'm not like pulling my ankle in front of my knee and putting a lot of extra torque on my knee and my hip. And that's where people get confused a lot of times thinking that it's dangerous for your knees and everything in rubber guard. It doesn't necessarily have to be. So I wanna uh, be able to cut a good angle whenever we get to this point here. So I wanna kinda cut over to the side. I wanna keep hugging my knee. And I would like to try to clear this arm. This arm right here is kinda in my way. So I'm gonna come up from underneath like this wrap and then hug the knee like this. It'd be nice if this leg over here could find his hip this way, right? Whenever uh, I get the, the foot and the hip like this here and I keep the angle, this is optimal here. I'm off to the side, so if he wants to posture up, he has to build a structure. And if he can build a structure off of me, then that's gonna make it easier for him to be able to get back up. But off to the side like this makes it a lot more difficult for him to do that. Uh, alternate control that you'll see from here a lot of times that guys will take is they'll go here and they'll actually hold this other foot and they usually refer to that as a double bagger. So um, once we get here like this, I'm hugging my knee, I'm wrist deep, I'm not just holding here and I'm not going overhand. Those are both kind of weak grips. This one's a lot stronger. So now from here, we start getting into a little bit more of a target rich environment. The next thing that I really want to kind of look to do from here to get even more control is take this hand from this side and put it on this side. Now, I could try to like loop it around somehow, but it's going to be really cumbersome and really difficult. So I'm going to keep hugging the knee on this side over here. I'm going to remove this one, and then I'm going to take this hand over and make a frame against his neck. If you're able to go here and you're able to clear the head like this, then you can start to pull the foot over here in front, and then I can bring this underneath his neck. Now from here, you have good options where you can reach around, start grabbing your toes, go for like Gogo Plata. Uh, sometimes his response to this is to reach here and try to push this to relieve some of the pressure on his neck, which actually gives me sometimes access to be able to, to get a hold of this wrist. Once I grab a hold of that wrist, I can start to pull this free and put my foot over here into his armpit. From there, I might be able to get a submission right off of here like this, right? If I'm able to clear this and get this leg inside, I can go to a modified kind of go-go plata off of here. If from here, the way that he chooses to try to alleviate some of the pressure isn't by grabbing my foot, but it's instead by turning away from the pressure to try to maybe pull his arm out, that's whenever we can start to transition into omoplata setups like this here. So I'm gonna keep the pressure around on his shoulder, and then from here, I'm gonna try to get his shoulder down onto the floor and keep hold of uh, his wrist, try to get his hip over toward me, flatten him out, and then start going into uh, different omoplata setups and things like that. Something just as simple as using this to set up omoplata and expecting the sweep to come right after it if he starts to roll over this side here and pushing the legs away like this, coming up to the top position, securing that arm, and then looking to move into different submission opportunities like this. I can sit here, I can start to rotate around, go in for like what's uh, referred to typically as monoplata from here where I'm underneath the neck, I go to pick up here, I'm still stuck on his wrist, so the torque goes into his shoulder from that side right there, or maybe even finish rotating all the way through to be able to go in for the straight arm bar off of that. Another really good tool to have in the toolbox from here is to reach across this way. So I'm grabbing over my own shin and ankle, and then I'm gonna to look to use this hand to start making space over on this side. This is what's commonly referred to as the meat hook um, in rubber guard terminology here. So I'm gonna make this space underneath the armpit. From there, I can start to maybe open space up, get this leg here free, and then go move into like triangle setups and things like that. Another use for it too is if I can make that space and I can get this arm on top of it. This is really difficult and really painful here for him right here to get out of. And you can turn this into submission opportunities possibly just here, or I can use this to start uh, looking for sweep opportunities as well. If from here, I can go and start to like look to pull him over and then start looking for, to move into sweeps. I can attack this arm right here and go into like a, like a monoplata setup off of this here. Or, even look to just like control that far side arm here while, while I start to reach through and start to set up like kimuras and things like that. 
Once we get over here uh, to this side, if I have cleared the head like we mentioned before, and I was able to get this in front, rather than just going straight into the Gogo Plata, because sometimes he'll give me different opportunities and different uh, difficulties whenever I'm trying to go for that because he knows how to defend or he knows the angle to cut. So another good uh, use for this here, whether for just control or for a submission opportunity, is what's referred to sometimes as a go-go clinch. So I'm gonna shoot this underneath my own ankle and then I'm gonna gable grip here in the back of his neck and I'm gonna look to squeeze right here. And that's a really powerful, painful choke like that. Again, anytime that he wants to go back and start trying to grab at my foot or anything like that, I can try to go here and release. If I need a little extra help off of that, I can use my knee to help bump to clear that here and then go back to that straight jacket kind of position like that. Sometimes whenever we're here like this, I've cut a good angle here. He feels like he's not going to be able to posture very well. He's not going to be able to pull out on this side because I've got too much reinforcing the control on this side here. So sometimes he'll feel this little gap of opening here. So he'll try to shuck and pull his arm free on this side. Whenever I feel that starting to happen, if I can feel whenever the shoulder starts to slip past and we can go here, I can look to set up a triangle with both arms inside. And this is referred to typically as a dead orchard. Uh, as Nathan Orchard's kind of coined that term. I'm gonna rotate here, finish with the arm lock most likely off of that uh, opportunity right there. One of my personal favorites from here that I use this a lot for is whenever the guy is starting to really stuff my leg down. And so he's already cleared my leg, my foot's out of his hip. And so this becomes kind of dangerous. If he passes his leg all the way through, he's gonna have a good pass opportunity for me here. So um, a good option from here that you can do is you can look to go ahead and finish clearing this side over here like this and then this leg here just to go to extend it out. And then as long as I get this hook behind his leg, he can't really go forward very easily and he can't really go back either. And so the opportunity, the submission opportunity that's gonna come from this is typically gonna be on the shoulder. So we're gonna slide right back here and go for the shoulder lock. It doesn't look or feel even for me like I have a ton of control, but as he can't go backward or forward, it gives me a good opportunity to finish right here on the shoulder lock or even on the wrist lock here like this. So another good uh, submission opportunity from here, if he's creating a good gap of space on this side right here, I can take this hand and I can punch it underneath his neck over here on this side. If I can reach and pass it off to where I can grab my ankle over here, then I can come back on this side here, grab my shin and use this almost like a cross collar choke like this, except using my shin rather than having to use actual material. So again, that one here is where like this, I feel like there's a good opportunity and good space. I'm gonna reach underneath, I'm gonna grab toward my ankle or foot, and then this hand's gonna come to the other side, fill that space up, and then finish with that choke right there. Rubber guard can still be really versatile even if you don't have the highest level of flexibility. But some of those other flexible moves, just to kind of mention, is like if we're here like this, and I can get, uh, reinforce the control this way here. This is a really powerful kind of control. It's really strong on keeping his posture down like this. Um, from a striking perspective, this gives me a lot of good control over his shoulders, over his posture. And it also frees this hand up here if I want to be able to punch or I'm going to be able to elbow like this, we'll be able to, to come down with elbows this way here. Um, if from that same kind of idea, I pass the head or I, I clear the head on this side first and then I lock it up. This is called invisible collar here and it's really painful on his uh, neck and on his collarbone and it actually turned into a bit of a choke and a crank. So again, guys, this doesn't even really scratch the surface. Rubber guard is an extremely versatile uh, guard system to use. And so I, um, I would fully recommend checking out uh, lots of other really good resources on it. Like uh, Brandon McCaffrey has a lot of really good resources. Of course, Eddie Bravo kind of pioneered the position. So look at his material too. Lots of really good instructional resources out there on it, guys. But I hope this gives you a nice little introduction to it and shows you some of the versatility of it and kind of piques your interest a little bit. So thanks a lot, guys. Keep watching the Night Jiu-Jitsu channel.